want to be friends with this fox so bad. Okay, so let's go. Dear reader, first may I say sorry for any words I spell wrong because I am a fox, so don't write or spell perfect. But here's how I learned to write and spell as good as I do. One day, walking near one of your human houses, smelling all the interest with snout, I heard from inside the most amazing sound. Turns out what that sound is was the human voice making words. They sounded great. They sounded like pretty music. I listened to those music words until the sun went down, when all of a sudden I was like, Fox 8, crazy nut. When sun goes down, world goes dark. Skedaddle home or else there can be danger. But I was fast and mated by those music words and desired to understand them totally. So came back night upon night, seated upon that window, trying to learn. And in time, so many words came through my ears and into my brain that, if I thought upon them, could understand human pretty good if I hear it. What that lady in that house was saying was stories to her pups with love. When done, she would douse the light, causing dark. Then, due to feeling love, would bend down, putting snout and lips to the heads of her pups, which was called goodnight kiss. Which I got a kick out of that, because that is also how we show our love for our pups as foxes. It made me feel good, like humans could feel love and show love. In other words, hopeful for the future of Earth. But one night, I heard something that made me think twice about humans. And there's our cute little illustration. And I still am. What I heard was a story, but a false and mean one. In that story was a fox. But guess what the fox was? Sly. Yes, truly. He tricked a chicken. He lured this plump chicken away from its hen house, claiming there is some feed in a stump. We do not trick chickens. We are very open and honest with chickens. With chickens, we have a super fair deal, which is they make the eggs, we take the eggs, they make more eggs, and sometimes may even eat a live chicken, should that chicken consent to be eaten by us through failing to run away upon our approach after she has been looking for feed in a stump. Not sly at all. Very straightforward. That story was also false due to the main chicken is wearing glasses, which chickens that I know of do not wear glasses. I do not think this is because all chickens see great. I think it is because chickens do not even know when they don't see great due to, although I have the highest respect for chickens loving their eggs, they are perchance not the brightest. But chickens wearing glasses was not the only false story I heard. Like I heard stories about bears, in which bears are always sleeping and nice and loving. Believe me, as someone often chased by bears, never was a bear chasing me one, asleep, or two, nice, and three, loving. You should hear the many not nice things a bear is saying in bear as he is chasing you, as luckily you slide into your den just in the neck of time and try not to start crying in front of all your foxes. In terms of owls, owls are wise. Don't make me laugh. Once an owl nipped Fox 6 quite cruel on his neck just because Fox 6 was saying a friendly greeting to the baby owls with his snout. For a long time, no one but me knew I knew human. Then one day, as faith will have it, I am walking through the woods with Fox 7, a good pal, when all of a sudden a branch drops down on us from upon high. And I was like, oh wow, but said not in Fox, but in human. Fox 7 was so shocked he just sat with haunch on ground and tongue lolling out, along with the wide eyes of being completely astonished. To which I said, correct, what I just now spoke was human, dude. And he was like, that is pretty good, Fox 8. To which I was like, in human, to perhaps show off a slight. It is super good, no doubt, Fox 7. And he was like, we must tell our great leader. This is so to which in Fox, I was like, I know, right? So we went to our great leader, Fox 28, and I spoke in some human. When I had spoken my human, great leader turned his head sideways the way us foxes do when feeling quizzical or a noise is patterns every night without fail. He was like, perhaps you would be good enough to use your new skill to help the group. I was quite flattered by this show of respect from Great Leader, famous among us for wise counsel, plus always leading us great. I was like, happy to help. 
Great Leader was like, follow me, Fox 8. Which I did, shooting Fox 7 a proud look of, dude, check me out. Soon we are standing before a uh, sign, and upon that sign are some human letters, like the ones I've been learning. And thanks to my studies, I could read it. Luckily, I had learned their alphabet by squinting my eyes through that window at their books. What those words said is, coming soon, Fox View Commons. I read them to Great Leader, who, back in our den, said them aloud to the group. Those words caused many sudden questions in all our brains, such as, what is a Fox View Commons? Would it chase us? Would it eat us? Turns out it could not eat us. It could not chase us. But what it could do was even worse. Because soon here came trucks, smoking while tooting. They dug up our primary forest. They tore out our leaning tree. They wrecked our shady drinking spot and made totally flat the highest place of which we know, from where we can see all of creation if it is not raining. Woe was us. As far as we could see, it is just flat, no trees. Upon trotting to our river, we found it wrecked due to so much sudden dirt floating in. Also wrecked were our fish, who, not even swooping a single flipper, just glanced up blank at us like, wow, we do not even get what just happened. While trying to explain it was trucks that happened, we learned one reason they could not swoop a flipper is, they are dead. Plus, not only are our fish dead, but all the things we love to eat, such as bugs, such as fat, slow mice, are totally gone. We searched all day, snout slow, but not one snack. Soon, several of our extremely old foxes became sick and dead because no food. These dead friends were Fox 24, Fox 10, and Fox 111. Good foxes all. My audio is really low. Let me see. I don't super know how to adjust it. I don't think there's a whole lot. Hmm. I'm not sure because it was working okay last night. Sorry, I'm moving my microphone, so if you have headphones in, you might want to take them out. Let me see. Maybe if I put it on. Oh, what if I do? Oh, audio seems. Okay, so maybe. Sorry, Jesse, maybe it's just you. Sorry. Okay, done moving microphone. Let me have tea one moment. Oh, it cut out? Okay. Let me know if it cuts out again. Um, or if like I start to glitch or something. I think my internet right now is doing pretty well, but like, I don't know. If it gets too bad, I'll just switch over to data and hopefully that'll be better. Okay. One lesson I learned through my nights at that human window was, a good writer will make the reader feel as bad as the human does there in the story. Like the writer will make you feel as bad as Cinderella. You will feel sad you cannot go to the dance, and mad that you have to sleep. You will feel like fighting stepmother on her gown. Or, if you are Pinocchio, you will feel like, I would rather not be made of wood. I would rather be made of skin, so my father Geppetto will stop hitting me with a hammer, and so forth. If you want to feel as bad as we foxes are feeling at this time, 1. Barely eat for weeks. 2. Note that many friends, including you, are getting skinnier every day. And 3. Watch several of your beloved friends get so skinny, they die. At this time, Great Leader grew quite sad. It was like he grew too sad to lead, and would sit for hours staring into space. It was like Great Leader blamed himself that we had lost our forest in which we had always lived since time immemorial. But we did not feel it was his fault. It happened so fast, who could have been great enough to stop it? I for sure did not know how to stop it. Once I snuck into the back of a truck and stole their hammer with my mouth. I know it is not good to steal, but I was so mad. But me stealing that hammer did not even slow them down. They must have had other hammers. And there's a little illustration of a fox stealing a hammer. Finally, some of us went to Great Leader and are like, Great Leader, let us go forth and find some food, plus a better place to live. But he just did this moan and was like, no, no, it is too dangerous. 
everyone stay right here where I can see you. And once again, Clay's head between paws. Week upon week, the trucks kept working. The humans sure could work. They worked and worked until soon a whole forest is gone. How did they do it? With their hands plus trucks. Turns out what they were making is several big white boxes with, written upon them, mystery words. Upon my reading of these words, my fellow foxes looked at me all quizmical, like, Fox 8, tell us, what is Bonton? What is CompuFun? What is Hooters? What is Cookies and Cream? But I could not say those words never being heard by me at my story window. Foxview Common seemed to be a place humans came to put their cars. They would go into the white boxes and wait there until cars were ready to go home. Sometimes I would go up to a car, inside of which there is a dog, and, due to speaking decent dog, would be like, how's it going? To which the dog would either look blank at me, as if I was not even speaking dog, or fling himself around inside their car as if they would like to break out and do damage to me, a fox. But finally, one dog does answer, going, pretty good, how about you? It is really hot in here. And I was like, friend, what is this place? He was like, parking. I was like, what is it for? At which point he took a pause to lick his butt while I politely waited. Finally, he was like, the mall. I was like, but what is the purpose of the mall? By this time, however, he is asleep. With legs running, yet still trapped in that car, probably dreaming he is a fox with foxly freedom and less pudgy. But he was right. It was parking. It was the mall. Humans would go, you kids, stop fighting. We're at the mall. Quit it. Quit it. If you don't stop fighting, how would you like it if we just skipped the mall and you can go right to your algebra, Kirk? Or, speaking into a small box, a human might go, I have to run, Jeannie. I'm just now parking at the mall. Or one human slaps the butt of a second, and the slapped one leans in, quite fond, going, Elliot, you kill me. Or a lady drops her purse and bends to retrieve her goods, when suddenly her hat blows away, at which time, speaking a bad word, she looks ready to sit and cry. Only a nice man appears and raises, uh, raises off in a quest of her hat, though he has a slight limp. Humans. Always interesting. One day, I'm crouching at the edge of parking, gazing over at the mall, when out comes a pair of humans. One was like, okay, I will meet you at the food court when you're done with your lip walks. Lip wax. And the other was like, if you're late, I will totally kill you, Megan. And the other was like, don't worry, I'll find you. You'll be the one with the way red lip. Then they laughed. That phrase of food court pricked up my ears bit good. Might there be food in a food court? There might, I felt. Here I should say, all my life, I have had quite creative daydreams. They would just come upon me, and I would enjoy them. With some favorites being, some humans hear me speaking human so good they give me some chicken, and I sit right at their table, and they go, how is it being a fox? And I go, fine. And they go, foxes are our favorite animal. And I go, thanks. And they go, why, oh, why were we so stupid as to choose dogs for our main pets? And I go, I really don't know. Or, some bears are chasing me. I stop and, holding one paw aleft, give them a speech about being nice. And they are like, maybe this is weird to ask, but could you, a fox, be our great leader and teach us to be nice and not walk funny? And I go, sure. And they applaud with their paws. But awkward. So I teach them to clap good and they look at me with love. Or, some birds fly around my head going, what a pretty fox. We have flown everywhere in this world and never seen one prettier. And one bird goes, and smart, too, and the others chirp their agreement. Now, crouching near parking, I had a creative daydream about food court, which was, go in, get some food. Why not? How hard could it be? If there is food, it should be food for all, right? That night at group meeting, I brought forth my plan. But sadly, my somewhat reputation as a dreamer preceded me, and not in a good way. Great leader was like, what is food court anyway? Sounds dangerous. I was like, humans are nice, they are cool. And Fox 41 was like, all snotty. Oh right, very funny. I'm sure we're going to trust the same fox who once claimed he went to college with some baby. Fox 41 bringing up that baby was so not cool. Once, long ago at that story window, I daydreamed those humans invited me in and let me hold their baby. And that baby loved me so much we soon journeyed to college together. 
wear our little college hats. It was great. At college, we learned such human skills as working machines and how to play a violin completely screechy. But when I came home and told my foxes about going to college with that baby, they did not believe me. To prove it, I decided to show them my college hat, which was when I remembered I had daydreamed the whole thing. The only college hat I had was in my brain. Trey embarrassing. So that is why in group meeting, great leader was like, no fox eight, no mall, good input though. I turned to my other foxes and was like, guys, please support me on this but found the eyes of my other foxes lolling up at the ceiling. Fox 4 was like, no offense, Fox 8, your ideas are not super practical. Dream, 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 said Fox 11. Fox 41 was like, Fox 8, does this honestly never get old for you? Great Leader was like, I have spoken. And something in me was like, Great Leader, blah. I still loved him, but it was like he was not being all that great, or even a leader. I mean no disrespect. It was just a strong feeling in my heart that it was no good for foxes to give up and just be dead on purpose. All that night I could not sleep for beans, but just lay awake looking sadly around at all my sleeping foxes and was like in my brain, friends, you do not look so good. The hair of your coats is mangy. You are nearly all eyes due to super hungry. Your sides are like heaving in your sleep. Dear foxes, you have known me since as a pup. I tried to bite my own face in our river. You knew me back when daydreaming, I stepped in poop of wolf and brought it back inside the den, causing everyone to wrinkle their snouts, going like, Fox 8, jeez, how could you not smell poop of wolf when it's right on your own dang paw? But you forgave me, and when I had got most of the poop off by rubbing against a tree, even helped me lick myself all the way good. And since I love you, should I not do my best to save you? Hence, I decided to go alone, and next morning set off for the mall. You may have heard the human phrase, what are friends for? Well, I will tell you, friends are for when your whole group turns its backs on you, here comes your friend Fox 7, of who I spoke of earlier, as being the first fox I ever spoke human to, trotting up beside you. He was like, I'll go with you, Fox 8. I was like, dude. He gave this small shrug, like, no big deal. We trotted a while in good cheer. Soon here was the mall. Could we cross parking? We could, and did. Here is how you do it. Take a deep breath. Look left and look right. Very vigorous. Careful, careful. Go, 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 go. Do not even pause. Fox View Commons is now bouncing because you are galloping so fast. A car almost gets you. Do a panic yip. Stop. Take a slight break under another car. Try to go too bad you can't. Too scared. Do a minor worry yip. Go, pause. Look again, look again. Go, stop, look again. Just really book it. You made it and are not dead. But now here was a problem we had not mulled, which is a door. Doors being a problem for foxes due to being heavy, plus their handles may be hot. But luck was with us. Just then, a very young human, a mere toddler, toddled past us with a smile of possibly thinking we are dogs. There in her hand, we noted some food. It looked good and smelled great. It is a bun! All of a sudden, we desired to enter into a fair deal with her, whereby we would share her bun by us taking it. But then, quick as the wink, she is in taken into the mall with one hand in the hand of her mother and, in the other hand, our bun. And before we knew it, we too, lured by her food, had been in taken into Foxview Commons right through their door. There is a high music sound. The ground is like glass or ice. And oh, my friends, the things we saw. We saw the gap. We saw eye-openers. We saw a pet store with captured cats. We saw a small river that, though flowing, did not smell right. We saw some fake rocks. We saw trees, real trees, inside Foxview Commons. It made us want to dig a den. We saw a group of young humans wearing bright clothes and dancing fast, and some old humans we think are their mothers, hopping about quite excited, yelling advice such as, Pick it up, Crystal! Or, Smile, Kara! Why you look so sad while dancing, babe? We saw a round thing which had fake horses upon it on which they are enslaved and made to go circular as young humans enjoy it by being placed on back of them. I was left to wonder, why would old humans enjoy putting young humans on fake horses? It was a total mystery, and remains so. It is as if an old fox enjoys putting his young fox on a fake deer. I, for one, would not enjoy that, although it might be funny at first.
right? It's so good. Also, thank you for the likes. I also think maybe next time I should make this sign a little bigger. Is it like a little too small to read? I feel like it might be. I'm gonna make like a better permanent design that'll have like, we're reading and then I can swap out what the book is. Yeah, yeah, oops, sorry. Thank you. I got it from a really cool Etsy shop. Maybe I'll make a little TikTok later because I can't remember the name of the Etsy shop off the top of my head. Yeah, that's the phrase, off the top of my head. Right? That's a phrase. Why did it sound so weird when I said it? Off the top of my head. That's a phrase, right? Oh, God, I'm so dumb. Um, yeah, maybe I'll make a TikTok and be like, this is where I got the hat because I can't remember the name of the Etsy shop, but it's a really great hat and I like it a lot. Thank you so much for the likes. Do, 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 do. Yes, that's the right phrase. Okay, thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, geez. Okay, where was I? <laughs> Humans would walk by and go, hey, look, foxes, and drop a bit of food at us. Soon we had caramel corn, several partial biscuits, plus a pear so fresh it did not even stink. I was like, this must be food court. Fox 7 was like, I guess so. We were so happy we sat between those fake rocks, speaking dreamily of our future, such as we would get some pants and glasses, we would ride in a car, placing a coffee on our briefcase. We would make such good friends with the humans, they would cut a fox door in their mall. Never had humans seemed so cool. We were surrounded by splendor no fox could create. Hence, we were filled with respect. Could a fox do this? Build a mall? Fat chance. The best we can do is dig our dens. Then it was time to go home. For now, we had food sufficient to save the lives of our friends. Holding that food in our mouths, we trotted back through Foxview Commons, heads held high, having such a feeling of pride, being probably the first foxes or even animals ever inside Foxview Commons, except for those captured cats. Out we went. Here again was the sun. Here again clouds. I could not wait to see Fox 41 and go, Hi Fox 41, professional turd, care for some food? But upon reaching the edge of parking, guess what we did not find? Fox 41 or our other foxes, or our den. It was like we had gone out a whole different door than we had gone in through. Now, one thing I learned from stories is when something big is about to occur, a writer will go, then it happened. This tells the reader, get ready. Here I go. Then it happened. Aw, I'm glad. I do have to give you a little heads up though. I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream. The bad thing is gonna happen now. There's some, uh, I don't wanna like spoil it too much, but also, okay, I'm just gonna tell you an animal dies. It's really sad. So if you need to go away for a couple minutes while I get through um, these like two pages, that's totally fine. I completely understand. Um, I'm gonna upload the whole thing to YouTube, so if you wanna go back when you're feeling like more ready to hear it, it's not super graphic or anything, it's just I wanna give you a heads up because I love animals, I hate when they get hurt, so I just, I want you to be able to like take care of yourself, you know? Um, it does end hopefully though, like the story has a great conclusion, just to allay any anxiety. Okay, let's go. <laughs> there at the edge of parking was a team of two humans doing some digging. One was like, holy crap, foxes, as if he'd never seen a fox before. My feeling was, yes, yes, we are foxes. Hello, friends. We have just seen the wonder that is your mall. We congratulate you. We glanced your fake river, observed your cute young ones dancing, gladly accepted your generous gift of food. You were so nice. What a great day for the fox-human connection. Then that first human, quite huge, took off a blue hat he was wearing, and I was like, in my brain, it must be a form of salute. So did a fox salute back, which is, reach out with front leg, bow, yawn. And then, on running toward us in a startling manner, he threw that hat at us. From the sound it made upon not hitting us, but only parking, I saw it must be made of rock. I gave Fox 7 a glance, like, what did we do wrong? Then the other human, 
quite small, ran at us and threw his hat. And oh, my friends, what happened next is hard to write. Because that hat wonked box seven square in his face. And suddenly his knees go weak and he gives me one last fond look and drops over on his side with blood trickling out his snout. I briefly tried to revive him by sniffing, but here comes the huge and the small human, running as if in victory, making a noise that made my hair stand on my neck, and what could I do but flee? Glancing back while trotting, I saw the huge and small human doing such things to Fox 7 as further hits with their hats and kicks and stomps while making additional noises I had never heard a human make, as if this is fun, as if this is funny, as if they are proud of what they are accomplishing. Reaching a dirt claw big as me, I lay behind it, panting while shaking which is when I saw the last straw of their cruelty, which was the small human picked up Fox 7, now dead, and flung him through the air. Poor Fox 7, my friend, was spinning while sailing like something long with a weight at one end. And what did those humans do? Stood bent over, laughing so hard, then retrieved their cruel hats and went back to work, slapping hands as if what they had done was good and cool and had made them glad. Rest of the day, I hid among those dirt clods, quietly whimpering. Okay, so that's, like, the worst part. <laughs> I don't know if I was even, like, emotionally okay with reading that, so. But, um, we are through it now. So, things are gonna get better from here. I know, I hate it so much. It's, like, <sighs> I hate it. I hate how, like, believable it is, too. Okay, I'm gonna refocus and keep reading. Sorry. Okay. I, I'm a baby. <laughs> oh, there's, like, a little bit more. It's just saying goodbye to Fox 7. Rest of the day, I hid among those dirt clods, quietly whimpering. When darkness fell, I snuck over and viewed what remained of Fox 7. I'd heard many stories at that window, but never had I heard a story in which anything like what happened to poor Fox 7 happened. I did not know a fox could look that way. Even our foxes who got hit by cars did not look as bad as Fox 7. And it was humans had done it. I trotted all night, Trey stunned. I would stop to sleep, but dream of Fox 7 and his sad last glance. Quaking there under the moon, I would remember the nice way Fox 7 had of doing a nose nudge if a friend of his might be feeling low. Then I would rise and run, trying to forget, and by morning was quite lost. For days I roamed, learning many things, such as a road can pass over a river, there is more than one mall, a tree can float in a lake, sometimes humans run in groups wearing yellow. Once on a sign is a picture of a duck chopping down a tree by using his axe. Another duck who looks tray mad. Oh! I'm so dumb. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> Once on a sign is a picture of a duck chopping down a tree by using as his axe another duck who looks tray mad. Soon my pads are bloody. There is no food. Sometimes I could find a grasshopper. Once I found a dead bird who had been dead so long he had bad hygiene, so I could not eat him. I tried, but no way. Perhaps, reader, you have heard that phrase called, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It is from a book. Once that mother tried reading that book to her cubs, but it proved boring with too many words. Thereby, her cubs began doing what young humans do when bored, which is rolling around with fingers up nose, pinching their baby brother. All I could think was, Fox 7 is dead and it is all my fault. Why had I ever had that dumb idea of entering the mall? Why was I born so weird? Why could I not be a simple fox, having no daydreams, speaking just fox, obeying my great leader? It was the worst of times, it was the worst of times. And to tell the truth, my heart went slightly bad. Trotting through a forest, I would hear such things as birds swooping down, praising all nature, and mice saying it was a super day, and cows in a nearby field going, oh wow, isn't the world great and so forth? We are just really loving this super grass. That is how animals are, quite cheerful. But I was not like that now, and knew I would not be like that again. Now their songs of love seemed like the dopey chatter Fox 7 and I had been saying to each other as we lay all happy between those fake rocks in the mall, 
sharing our hopeful plans of getting pants and glasses and so forth, and inviting humans to our den, serving them some fruit if we have some. All that time watching those humans with such love, not knowing what was coming next, like two little babies, fast asleep in the middle of a horrible world, who did not yet know how horrible it really is. Sometimes, trotting on my bloody paths through a human zone, such as Riverwalk Estates, along such roads as Hummingbird Way and Slow Stream Ave, or even Melody Manor Passage, seeing so many great dens with lights like indoor suns and water shooting magically out of their grass at will, seeing that long line of cars trot away so proud every morning, full of humans, and the other splendors humans could do, such as make grass short, such as cause flowers to grow inside their dens, I was like, why did the creator do so wrong, making the group with the greatest skills the meanest? Then one day, I come upon a forest, the like of which I had never seen before. So deep and green and dark and great smelling, it made those holes in my nose go super wide with sheer delight. Oh, the light through the trees, the moving shadows when the wind would blow, the million great smells such as water not far away, the wind in the high part of the trees, and sometimes a branch will crack. All of the sudden, I smelled fox big time then saw foxes big time. A whole other group, just like us, only not. Compared to us, they were one, less skinny, and had two, no fear in the eyes, and three, coats of the prettiest red ever, a deep foxly red that made me ashamed of my own dull coat. I told them my name and let them smell me, hoping they would like me, which they did. They did smell me. They did like me. They took turns smelling and liking me. I told them all that had befallen me. They believed it about them all. They did not believe it about Fox 7, I could tell. They looked at me funny, then looked at each other funny. Tell the truth, I would not have believed me either if I had showed up and told me that. Those foxes were super nice. One came over all shy and out of her mouth dropped a fruit at my paw. One dropped a gift of a part of a bird. They showed me to a pond where I drank so much they were slightly laughing. And I was like, there is no food or good water where I live. I know, I feel like the illustrations are so simple, but they're just so effective. I love that. One of them was like, we kind of figured. Then, thanks to my habit of daydreaming, I saw myself in my brain leading my other foxes to this paradise, one by one through Foxview Commons. I would show them the gap. I would show them the fake rocks. If one was scared, I would say, don't be scared, and make a joke. If one was slow, I would give a push from behind with an encouraging snout. If one was looking around all freaked out, I would calmly go, focus, focus. If one was cold, such as our great leader, I would carry him or her on my back. Or, oh, sorry, if one was old, such as our great leader, I would carry him or her on my back. Soon, in my mind, we are all safely there. And my other fox is looking at me with shy glances upturned or like, Fox 8, we could not have been more wrong. And they fan me with their fans. I snapped out from that daydream to find the new foxes regarding me with kindly smiles. When I told them my daydream, they were like, Cool, bring your friends here. We can all live together very happy. There is so much food here. It is like crazy. Would it be easy? It would not. It would take guts. But I have guts. I once licked the tire of a truck that was moving to see how it tasted, which the group teased me about it because, Hey, Fox 8, why not wait until one found a truck not moving? Would that not be easier? Only too bad. If this was a book, all it would take is guts and I could have done it. But no, it was real life. For many weeks, I tried to find my old foxes. My new friends even helped. But no way. We searched and searched, but never found my friends or even a trace of Foxview Commons. It is as if my beloved old group had fallen off the face of the earth. Goodbye, dear friends. I will not forget you. So now I live here. I have food. I have water. I have friends. One friend is Fox Small Nose Alert Plus Funny. She is pretty. She is nice. These new foxes do their names somewhat different, having words in their names. These words tell you what is noteworthy about each fox. Like one fox is known as Fox Complains Constantly, Yet Nice. One is known as Fox Why So Hefty. My friend Fox Small Nose Alert Plus Funny has a small nose plus is alert plus is funny, hence her name. Sometimes she is like, you are not all here, Fox 8. Come alive. Be happy. Yesterday she was like, you have a sad, dark view. And I was like, 
so would you. She was like, well, I do not want our babies having a mopey dad, to which I was like, wait, are we having babies? And she spun around and did a hop and yip. Hearing that gave me pause. I did not want to be the kind of dad who is so mad he just scowls and hence his babies are like, Og, dad brings us down, he does not find life good, but only sits mad in the den while us other foxes stare up at the moonlight, nuzzle him close, moving our tail areas back and forth the way we foxes do when glad. I wanted to be the kind of dad who, years hence, when thinking of me, our babies are like, good old dad, he was always there for us, showing us with the old snout nudge what is food and what is not. I know I'm kind of obsessed with Fox, why so hefty? <laughs> so asked myself, what might somewhat retrieve the old hope, the, sorry. So asked myself, what might somewhat retrieve the old and hopeful me? And replied, some answers. Which is why I am writing this letter to you humans. I would like to know what is wrong with you people. How could the same type of animal who made that lovely maul make Fox 7 look the way he looked that last time I saw him? Would a human do something like that to another human? I doubt it. Whenever I saw a human, he or she was laughing while smiling while approaching the maul. Sometimes one car might hit another car, and a human might be slightly mad. But always, by the end, they are at least nice and give each other the gift of a scrap of paper. Never once did I see a human hit another human with a rock hat, stomp and kick that human, then fling that human, laughing while he or she came down in a puff of dirt with a sickening sound. Maybe humans do that, but I have not seen it. I know life can be good. Mostly, it is good. I have drank clean, cold water on a hot day, heard the soft bark of the one I love, watched snow fall slow, making the woods quiet. But now all these happy sights and sounds seem like tricks. Now it seems like the good times are merely smoke that, upon blowing away, here's the real life, which is rock hats, kicking, stomping. Every minute, with no kicking and stomping, now seems like not a real minute. Do you get what I mean? It is like some friend who previously was nice suddenly says some cruel thing and does this nip on your flank. Even when he goes back to being nice, you will never feel exactly safe. And meanwhile, your other friends who did not get nipped are trotting around with happy smiles going, Fox 8, why so glum? This is one of my favorite illustrations, Fox 8 writing his letter. Previous to learning we would have babies, I felt about humans. I break with you. If you see me in the woods, do not come near. Stay in your awesome houses. Play your music loud, however you make it play so loud. Yap your human jokes, sending forth your crude laughter into the night. I will not approach you. I will just stay in my place, squatting low, fearful and quaking, which is how you seem to like us foxes. But now, babies en route, I do not want to feel that way. I want to feel strong and generous. I want to feel hopeful, which is why, upon completion of this letter, I will leave it at that house at the end of Clear Circle Way, where often I see a certain round guy feeding birds. His mailbox says his name is P. Malonsky. You seem nice enough, P. Malonsky. Read my letter, go farth, ask your fellow humans what is up, write back, leave your answer under your bird feeder, and I will come in the night to retrieve and learn. I am sure there is some explanation and would love to know it. Reading my story back just now, I was like, oh no, my story is a bummer. There is the death of a good pal and no place of uplift or learning a lesson. The nice fox's first group stays lost, his friend stays dead. Blah. If you humans would take one bit of advice from a mere fox, by now I know that you humans like your stories to end happy. If you want your stories to end happy, try being nicer. I await your answer. Fox 8.